Whether it's the cargo ship bridge collision in Maryland, the Alaska Airlines in-flight emergency, or the East Palestine, Ohio train derailment, when disaster strikes on the rails, the road, in the water, and in the air, it's investigators bearing four letters who are tasked with figuring out what went wrong. It's essentially unraveling a mystery every time. It is. For decades, the NTSB, the National Transportation Safety Board, has been responsible for pulling the threads. The federal agency was created as an independent watchdog, deliberately separate from the FAA and with a specific mission to investigate and make recommendations to prevent future accidents. The agency charged by Congress to investigate every aviation accident in America. Uh, yeah, we called Jensen County Sheriff's around the way. But as it balances budget and staffing challenges, our national investigative team discovered the NTSB is often MIA from a critical piece of crash investigations, the on-scene response. Did it surprise you that the NTSB did not send someone on site? I, I couldn't believe it. On October 2nd, 2020, Ellen Sturm was supposed to be hosting a birthday party with her longtime love, Steve Barnes. Before it even got started, a plane crash had her planning his funeral. When I picked up my cell phone, my brother was like, oh, Ellen, like, oh, you're okay. Like, and I just knew from his voice. Barnes, a prominent attorney and pilot, had gone to pick up his niece, Liz, in his private plane. Everything okay up there? Yes, sir. Five. Five minutes after a transmission captured his last words of reassurance, his plane went down in a wooded area near the Buffalo airport killing the pair on contact. Just a tremendous person. The, both of them. It's just like the two brightest lights extinguished. The crash by law automatically igniting a federal investigation by the NTSB. But although the agency was at the helm, it wasn't on the ground. They blamed COVID, although federal policy said mission critical travel was allowed. So the on-site investigation duties, things like examining the crash site and looking through the wreckage, were left to the FAA, which did respond in person. Members of Congress called on the NTSB to examine the Barnes crash site itself, but no agency staff made the trip. It was profoundly heartbreaking. It felt like nobody really cared enough to really, really look into what happened. Do you think that the NTSB can effectively investigate aviation crashes from a distance? Oh, no, absolutely not. No. But our national investigative team discovered arm's length investigations are a fairly common practice for the NTSB, even in cases where people are killed. With help from our partners at the Arnold Center for Investigative Journalism at Indiana University, we analyzed data from the agency's accident reports dating back to 2015. Our team found NTSB investigators didn't respond on scene to an average of at least 21% of fatal aircraft crashes each year. Some reports outlined a clear reason for investigators not to go. Things like pilot suicides, crashes into the ocean, or remote dangerous terrain that made examining wreckage impossible. Others had witnesses, video, or radio recordings that gave the NTSB solid leads on a potential cause without seeing the scene. But that's not always the case. Still no federal investigators on scene to study the wreckage. Including this 2019 crash that killed two pilots and left people picking through the wreckage of a plane strewn across the lawn of an Ohio home. NTSB investigators didn't respond on site that time because of a partial government shutdown that furloughed employees, drawing criticism from the former chair of the board. I, I think it's a, it's a huge mistake. Closed government offices and COVID aside, we found NTSB investigators have still played telephone in dozens of fatal crash investigations from Arizona to California and Texas, relying on FAA investigators to be their eyes and ears on the ground. What do you think is missed if these on-site investigations are not done and this is delegated to somebody else? Oh, it's all, it's the detail. It's the detail. You need to really have people that are focused on the subject at hand. John Golia is a former NTSB board member. He's now raising concerns about the agency directing investigations using FAA staff from afar. The FAA people go through an accident investigation course, but they don't do accident investigations for their full-time job. It is an extra duty for their inspectors. I know lots of them that do, try to do their best, but they're not doing it full-time. 
And our team found evidence of big differences between the training and experience levels required for investigators working for the two agencies. Questions we raised about that and the lack of agency response to some specific deadly crashes we cited went unanswered by the NTSB. I think most people, if they looked at this, whole, this picture as a whole, would say the problem is not at the NTSB, it's not at the FAA. It rests with the people who allocate the resources for the job that they want done. Resources are a real challenge. The FAA has more than 40,000 employees. The NTSB, about 400, roughly the same number they've had since the 90s, going decades without significant increases in funding to help them expand despite repeated pleas. The NTSB needs the resources to carry out our vital safety mission. That mission? investigating approximately 1,200 aircraft accidents each year with only about 50 on-scene investigators. Now, ideally, if we had 1,000 investigators, we could launch to, you know, 1,000 accidents. That's not realistic. So what we need to do as, as a board is to, is to utilize the resources that we do have. That's why Joe Sedor, the NTSB's chief technical advisor, says even when there's a fatality, the agency has to make strategic decisions about whether putting its own investigator in the field is necessary or if another party can handle it. We have a, an assessment process that we do every single time because as we say, it's like it's chaos management. That management extends well beyond those first moments following a crash. The records we looked at show NTSB investigations continue for months or even years. Looking at evidence, interviewing people, doing testing, all of that requires manpower. CDOR says the most efficient way to make it happen may be using FAA staff on the front end of some cases. We'll have a direct uh, contact with the investigator that goes and, and it will be a collaborative effort of, of deciding what to do. But it's that collaboration that has some critics sounding alarms about the NTSB and FAA being too close for comfort. The FAA has its own mission, along with a growing list of questions to answer about oversight in the wake of the Boeing scandals and Alaska Airlines door incident. It's a matter of trust, but it's also a matter of having that disconnect, making sure that the NTSB is disconnected from the FAA because you want people to have faith in the system. Right now, there's no faith in the system. David Williams with Taxpayers Protection Alliance believes separation is key. That's why he says his organization is joining the call for more NTSB funding so the agency can be truly independent. If the NTSB does not have people at these crashes and at fatalities, something is broken. Yeah, it's outrageous. It's, out, it's again, it's, it's our government not serving us. For Ellen Sturm, it's a failure to deliver answers for her family, to close the chapter on a mystery that continues to haunt them almost four years after the crash that killed Steve and Liz Barnes. The NTSB's final report lists the probable cause of the crash as a failure to maintain control of the airplane for undetermined reasons. Why did it drop from the sky? I, I still don't feel like I know. If they had been there on site, and still provided the same conclusion, would it bring you any comfort? Oh, for sure, absolutely, absolutely.